All right. Thank you for taking my class for this Thursday. Um, here is a little just run through of what you can do with the students. So they are very used to my routines and I often use, I, actually I use it every day and that is Pear Deck. So I'll show you how to do that. Uh, so I just wanted to give you a little video here to walk you through and make sure I cover everything. So I will send you these Google Slides and also the Pear Deck. They know how to get onto Pear Deck and how to use the slides. So I usually start off with right when they walk in, the students have assigned seating, they will grab their laptop. Sometimes they get a little chatty, so you just have to remind them. And they are going to go on to their online Duolingo game on their computer, or they can go to Google Classroom and play the ESL online games. So either one is fine. You're gonna give them about 15 to 20 minutes to do that. And I usually stand in the back and just kind of make sure that they're on there and that they're doing Duolingo. Um, they don't have to use headphones. You know, sometimes it gets a little bit, you know, they'll, I, I sometimes tell them just to turn it down a bit, but uh, they're just doing that uh, to warm up. Then I show them the agenda. I just kind of walk them through what we're doing. I usually talk to them in English. Um, if I have to I'll talk a little bit in Spanish, my Chinese students, I they can use immersive readers. So the students will have an icon down at the bottom and they can click on the little book and it'll have a bursa reader so they can read this in their own language. And so the first thing they'll do is they'll do a pair deck little activities about mood. Then we do a little activity called what is happening in the picture. The students will then I'll give you some worksheets they're gonna be doing on grammar, mainly on verbs. And then you're going to walk the class over right around 8.50. So around 8.50, two other teachers, Miss Masters, which is right next door, and Miss Knight, who is also right down the hall, will walk over to the wing wong, wing, wing wong. Um, I have three leaders, and that is going to be Joe, Glenda, and Caesar, and they will help you find this. And you're just going to walk the students over. They already have assigned seats, and they know what to do. They're just going to finish building their city. If you remember, they're never before seen city. And on Google Classroom, they have something called planning sheet. So they can take their laptops if they're not building anymore, and they need to finish, and they're going to write it in. They're going to type it in on their planning sheet. Some of them already did this. They might have it in their folder, their handout, but I want them to type in their answers. So that's what they should be working on is finishing. They will be presenting their city next week for their uh, presentations, and they're also doing a flip video on Friday. Okay, then they'll take a break. Um, I, if they took their laptops, I usually let the students keep the laptops in the wigwam, and then after break, so I would just hang around there. And after the break, they will pick up their laptops and walk over to the room since it's kind of a little walk. So then you come back to the classroom. And uh, if they go to Google Classroom, I'm going to leave them a couple little games that they could practice some other verbs and the, some vocabulary on a game called Look It. Then you know, I'm going to have you uh, have them read the Telltale Heart. They get to use Google Translate so they can translate the story so they should read it in their own language. Then you can walk them through a quick discussion, just random questions. I usually just call on students or ask for volunteers, questions just like what's happening, who are the characters. They're only going to read the first part. And then they're gonna do something called a zine, which is a little mini book. And some, there's some examples there that I'll leave you. The students already know how to do that. All they need is a white sheet of paper. And I'll leave you a stack of white sheet of paper. And right around 11 or so, whenever is a good time, you give them about a 10 minute break. They can go right outside. There is a clipboard for them to sign out. If they need to go to the restroom, make sure they take their the little um, hall pass. They need to leave their cell phone behind and they can go only one at a time. And then they're gonna come back and they're gonna finish if they haven't finished their mini book. And then we're gonna end with watching a video and it's actually not Where Is The Love. There's a different video you're gonna watch. You're gonna get, again, a chance for them to discuss it with their partner. They'll do a little uh, online activities and then they'll do the academic summary. If there is time, they can work on missing work reading progress or Duolingo. All right, let me walk you through. So this is my pair deck. And so today they're talking about mood. We talk about how do we relax? How do we make sure that we're in a good place? And so they get to move this little star um, to wh wherever they're feeling. So I would walk them through this again for our Chinese students who are very level one, have them go to Immersive Reader. They can translate this into their own language. And I would talk to them like, what does it look like when we're you know, feeling good? What does it look like when we're tired? when we're angry and so take a look at all that vocabulary that you can go over they can you can act it out with them they can act it out you know i might have the whole class okay go ahead and slouch go ahead and sigh go ahead and yawn what does eyes have closed right 
So I would take each, so take your time with this. You're definitely gonna have a, it's, you know, five hour class, so nice and slow. And you wanna have a lot of conversation, have them maybe use the word in a sentence and so forth. So I would take some time doing this one. Then they get to do a little drawing or they can write out the words. So what are some ways that they deal with stress? Maybe they go running, maybe they listen to music. And so you can have that go. Now down here, you will be able to show the responses and see what students are doing. Sometimes I do like, oh, guess the picture. What do you think this means? So you can show the, the drawings there. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. Here's another one where they get to draw, you know, drag the heart. Where are they feeling at today? Why are they feeling that this is a good opportunity for them to share with their partner? Okay, what's your emotion right now? What made you feel this way? How do we change our emotions and our mood? And so again, just a little conversation about social emotional feelings. And then, you know, as you get into the day, uh, this is week two. Next week, they have their finals. A lot of them are feeling a little tired, right? So remind them how to relax. Okay, this one, they can, they'll see it there and they can put this little red dot and they're just gonna say the word to themselves. They're going to practice it with their partner. You might wanna walk them through. I sometimes do one row at a time and I just say, okay, everybody say it with me. Bake, date, and I always tell them, look, you don't pronounce the E but you make this vowel the long vowel. So in the worksheets, they're gonna be doing some worksheets with the long vowel, short vowel sound. So male, main, you know, you might even wanna go over some words, what they might mean. So again, nice and slow. Then I'm gonna give you a worksheet. They're gonna do page 86 and 87. I went ahead and left you the answer key. They can do this with their partners. I would go over it also with the students, uh, show them some examples. So again, a little bit of grammar. All right. Now, keep an eye on the time. Remember that you're going to walk over to the other uh, building, to the other room. It takes about 10, you know, five minutes to walk over there. So around 8.50, you want to head over. So you can do this before, the, before they head over or after, depending on your time. Okay, so they're very used to this activity. So this is uh, what's going on in this picture. So they're going to look at it. They're going to analyze it nice and big, right? You can even get off a of Pear Deck and you can um, go on Google Slides and just make it a little bigger on the projector if you wanted to. And the goal here is to write as many nouns as possible. So on their Pear Deck, they're writing, you know, there's a, a man with a hat, there's a girl with a cup, right? They could just put uh, nouns. Uh, there's a house or a garage, there's another girl, I see a horse, I see a mom, I see a child, I see a tree trunk, I see a tree. So again, you're gonna help them with some vocabulary. Here, they're gonna answer these questions. Notice the different parts to it. They need to take a guess, and this should be one or two sentences. I think this is a, so what do they want to, uh, what's their prediction? Then they need to get three details to say that. I think this because, you know, they're looking up, they look excited, they look fun, right? So three, and then they're gonna ask their partner what they think it is. When you're ready, you're gonna click on this article here, okay? So click on it and you can, again, you go to Google Slides and it'll be a, a, an article that you can click on. So if you click on it, it'll take you to the actual article. This comes from the New York Times. And what you'll do is you'll scroll all the way down and here's the reveal. And you can kind of just read this, you can translate it. Basically, this is a parade, uh, a little famous parade if we're in Mardi Gras, right, in Louisiana and people are just standing around and one of the traditions is to throw a live chicken into the field right and everyone's dressed up and so that's what they're doing now you could also show what students other students across the nation thought it was so you can show them you know how people are are responding so this is a cool little activity on you know guess the picture so that's that one okay i'm gonna keep going all right then you know, again, you could either do these activities, uh, this activity before you go on to the wigwam or after. Okay, so then let's say you walk over to the other room. They'll have the room open. Miss uh, Masters will take over. She'll use my little headset. And then she'll walk the students over. Uh, they're almost done with their city. So they had to create a city. Okay, um, these are all the different types. Each student will present on one aspect of the city. So these are the different kind of uh, topics. This is a checklist, so they have been working on all of this, so they should pretty much be finishing up. The part that you, they should be doing right now is the planning sheet. So they're working with their city members, their team members, and they're completing this uh, planning sheet, finalizing it. Uh, all of these other things, they sh pretty much should be done. 
Um, this probably the last one is where they're going to choose a part and start practicing what they're going to say. Uh, and I will, I will show them that's going to be for Friday um, on what they're going to be talking about. Okay. Then they're going to, when they come back from the break, have them, you know, settle in on a little stretch break and then have them go to Google Classroom. And this is just a little brain break and they can play a, a little a game online. It's called the Blook It again. And that's the link is online. Okay. So they'll play that for about 10 minutes or so. Then they're going to get ready to read. All right. So when they read, they're going to once again go to Google Classroom. They're going to open the assignment called the Telltale Heart Part 1. And they're going to read it. They're going to read it in their own language. So it allows, they know how to translate the document. So give them about, you know, 10, 15 minutes, kind of keep a watch. And then I will, I have it scheduled. So once they're ready, I'll send them the, um, the quiz. So I'll send that to you, right? And they'll, they can take the quiz. I would just give them a little half sheet of paper and they would just write the number and the letter. So just the number and the letter, their name, title, and then have them take the quiz. And then I would uh, redistribute them. So collect them, redistribute them, and you can just grade it right there. So I would just have your, the students help you grade it and go over the answers. Number one is this, why is it that? Number two, and it's just a quick little quiz. Do they, uh, did they understand the story? This would be a good time also to talk about the story. So I would call on students to help you fill this out. So they're filling this out. Okay, let's go, what happened? What was the setting? Who were the characters? What's happening first? Basically what they're getting ready to do is to write their own suspense story based on their never before seen city. So they're going to be doing something similar, but they're gonna be making up their own story. Okay, and so they, they work on that. They're gonna then, we've already done these in class. And so they're going to be making a little mini magazine. So those that wanna draw it out, they'll do the paper one. If they don't wanna do the paper one, they could do a virtual comic book. And we did that one uh, on Tuesday. They know how to do that too. So they have a choice. Everyone has to make their own, okay? Everyone has to make their own, okay? And there's a video. If there's time, depending where they're at, you can have them watch a little video. This is a really powerful video. Highly, highly, I love this video. You can watch it with them. And then you can have them talk about it, discuss it, what's happening. We're practicing a lot of <clears throat> transition words like first, then, next, finally, suddenly, so things like that. So you can have them watch the video. On Google Classroom, I also added the lyrics and they can translate it so they can read the lyrics slowly i would have them go go to google classroom and read the story so that they have it there they're not doing flipgrid so ignore that um and then they can uh, again watch it and discuss it then they can do some central ideas what was the video about um they can answer some of these questions they're just taking the dot this is our great conversations that you can have as whole group here's another one why do they believe that colleague on volunteers and again, we probably won't have enough time, but if there is, and you know, you need more things for them to do, here's an academic summary that we've been working on. They can type it right there on Pear Deck. Um, and again, if they finish early, they can do Duolingo, they can finish the missing work. And that's pretty much it. So again, I'm still getting, finalizing a few more things. I'll be adding the quiz, um, and then I'll write some of this down, kind of a more basic outline, but that's pretty much it. So please let me know how they did. Let me know where they left off, if there's anything they didn't finish, if you had any discipline issues. A couple of the boys get a little talkative. That's pretty much the biggest issue is that they like to talk a little bit too much. Other than that, they're a good group. Um, one student likes to sometimes sleep in the morning, so you have to just remind him. If you have any issue at all, you can always send the, the student right next door to Ms. Master's class and they can hold them there for me. Um, and they can do some in some work there on their own, but I've never really had to do that. Um, again, the worst thing is that they they complain sometimes about too much work. Don't worry about that. Um, you have my number. Uh, you can definitely text me if there's any question or, or emergency. Um, so hopefully you have a lot of fun with them. Okay, thank you.